Wales, first off the mark, pretty much every morning. My second home. Hello everyone. Come on in, the water's lovely. <coughs> Who's already done some movement this morning? Who's already been for a walk? <clears throat> I know from messages just moments before this that we have some new people joining. So hopefully you've found us. Pam, have you found us? This is why I, I press this little button about four, four and a half minutes before we go, just to allow people to navigate the, this little screen. I don't know about you, I'm watching you um, these comments on, a, on an iPhone. Perhaps you're watching on a tablet or on a computer. But this preamble, if you don't want this preamble, if you've got enough going on, go and do something else and come back in about three minutes. That's okay. That's okay. Of course it's okay. Do what you want, do what you need with these sessions. They are for you. I can see uh, lots of friends, professional friends, people I don't know that have come in. I do need to shout out to um, Pete Campbell, Al LT, back office superstar, along with all the other superb and supportive LLT HQ team, Pete, Louise, David, Jennifer, Morag, Kristen, Kirsten, sorry. There you go. There's my LLT shout out. Office team. I think um, two minutes maybe. And then I'll start to get you excited about this 10 minute snack, get the movement juices going, literally get in the zone, prepare the menu as always. It's like master chef here in the mornings and 12 and four. So I prepare these menus for you. They don't taste great, but they feel good. Huh? So as we ease into the last minute of this, you may want to start thinking about, do you, you want to start in a stand or a sit position? As uh, usual in the mornings, I'm in the, in the dining room with the hard chair. Sounds a bit like Cluedo. Please feel free to switch between these positions, depending on the movement, depending what part of the body is moving, you may want to sit down to focus on trunk mobility for example or you may feel confident and happy to stand up for cir circulation boosting so just because you start seated or you start standing doesn't mean that has to be the position that you remain in because things change as as body parts shift and move so do switch between the two at your leisure and pleasure don't wait for me to say this is uh, very much um, a, a toolbox, a toolkit of movement. So I'm not just gonna say, follow me, do what I do. I, I'm really trying to give you some options and thoughts that you can then utilize throughout the day. Should we do it? Three, two, one. Good morning, my name is Bex Townley. This is week two. I have to keep checking because I'm losing track of days. Week two, day two, movement snack one. And we are here to accumulate 10 minutes of movement minutes this morning. So um, I'm aware that some of you have already been up and around. Some of you, this is your first introduction. So I'm gonna keep going on the fundamentals running through this and offer some options for you to consider to either progress or ease off if you need. Ready, steady? 
Go. Pick your position then. Here we go. The, uh, the circulation boosting prepares us for these mobility movements this morning. And you may uh, be happy and confident in stand position. You may want a little bit of, of, of hand on the table just to support that. Or you may prefer to do pick a, a, a fixed surface that's good for your height so that it doesn't impede your movement, so maybe something higher. And if you're in the chair or in a seated position, do try to come forward and, and, and kind of come away from the back of the chair so that your posture muscles are doing the work. If you feel that you fatigue or get tired after a while and you can feel yourself sagging, that's okay to take that pause and then just, just try to lift it again in between. So if you feel that your, your form, your technique or your posture is starting to tire, that's the time to just take a pause, take a rest and then join in again when you're ready. So, in seated, circulation. If you're up in stand, you can start the circ boost already. Don't wait for me, get the feet going. These are feet, by the way. And I'm doing this to reinforce the fact that this, this march or this, <clears throat> this walk is really generated from the feet. We're really trying to articulate ankles and feet. What we're trying to avoid, just to give you a, an extra image for, for clarity, we're trying to avoid the marching stamp. It has a value, it has a place. It's, it's not terrible, but we're really trying to make the most of these movements. Bring in the toes as well. I tend not to use uh, shoes in these ones because uh, maybe you're in slippers at home because of the early hour. <clears throat> this gives us a great opportunity to think about toes as well. And toes are really critical in standing movements, walking and, and balance. Certainly big toes, you'll know that. Keep going, uh, seated group please. And if you are in stand, let me just give you a bit of a reference point here. Free up the arms as and when you feel you're happy to. Keep the posture open and lifted. Keep the head looking forwards. So it's just this, this proud open chest. This is uh, gonna aid and help not only posture, but all upper limb movements. Support here if you need. You can make that arm um, movement a little bit more deliberate if you, if you can, please. And focus on the backward press. So we've got this, this slight bend here. So we have this. And this is the same, keep going, standing group. This is the same in seated also. If it feels, <clears throat> if you feel that your posture starts to go a bit haywire when the arms and legs start to move together, park the legs and then build up the arms separately. And um, we've been adding in some, some options here. You might want to guide that elbow back a bit more and then just mix that up between top half and lower half and as and when you feel you can, bring them in. But if it all goes wrong, that's okay, just stop and build it up again, it will come. Build it and it will come. So uh, don't make this too big, don't get uh, too excited about this circ boost, it's literally to boost the circulation. So at the end of this minute, we just should feel a little bit, okay, I'm ready. Not aiming to be out of breath, this isn't an aerobic puff and puff workout, that's not what it is, and hopefully you've noticed that. Just a little bit of circ boost, just to really support the circulation um, in these movements we're about to do. All mobility, we're gonna to go top to bottom, starting with our shoulder rolls. So join in when you see it, in stand here. If you're happy without support, the arms can stay released. If you want a little bit of fingertip to the, to the support, that's okay, or two if you need or even you might want your support to come from just a little bit of, uh, of touch here on a support or on a wall that enables you to stand freely. Once, three times or five times, same in seated. What we're after here is quality of movement, not quantity, quantity. So uh, for, for me, what I'm, if I could see you, I'd be saying, just make it one good one rather than three, four, five, not very good ones. And a good one is the fullest possible range of movement that's comfortable for you. If you have limitation or restriction, make the movement smaller and you can further focus on one or the other. If that backward circular roll 
is um, is impeded by restriction or limitation, just go for the up and the down, see how that goes. Moving into our head turns, um, seated or stand, remember when we, when we start to add head movements, this may well challenge your balance. So if you're in standing, pick up some more support here, hands on, sorry, pick up, that's my phraseology, hands on the support if you want, seated if you prefer, sideways glance, return to center, just pause here, just do a little check that you are comfortable and lifted, and then bring those together. You may feel that you have more movement on one side than the other, this is quite usual. Keep the shoulders down and relaxed, just once, twice or three times of these, building up to five, pause in the middle, take your time, and really try to keep the gaze, the eye gaze forward. So we're looking to avoid lifting the head actually. Uh, one more on the, the neck fingertip. Uh, there's a reference point here on the, on the chin and we're looking to ease the head back. So it's not a lift or a turn, it's like a, it's like a press back there. If you imagine you've got a, a big cushion behind your head and you're looking just to ease the head into it and you can see here hopefully from the side that this is really aiming to support this position our head is very heavy uh, so it has a, a big uh, effect on our on our balance so we're really trying to help get keep that head in the best possible position for all of our activities so having done shoulders head and neck we're now going to come down to the trunk the middle bit just have a little bit of release on the march here, whether you're in sit or stand. And let's come to our trunk turns. In seated position, your, your biggest focus, I would suggest, is to keep your backside, both buttocks, firmly on the chair. Feet perhaps a little bit wider, because we're still turning the whole body here, so we still need a good base of support. And that applies in standing as well, so a little bit wider, this will help with your balance. Support if you need, release, just release the arms, take the turn, pause in the middle. You may want to relax and release and go again. And we're just trying to squeeze around. This keeps moving, this is, this is important. So as you turn, once you've got to your position, you come straight back and you pause in the middle. Quality over quantity. Just ease into this movement. It's still fairly early, so you're just finding your way, kind of almost waking up the body. Yes, one time, three times, or five times. And um, the hands can walk round with you. It can feel quite nice just to bring in these arms. It makes it more functional. If we are going to turn or twist, it's probably because we need to use our arms. Change of movement now. This uh, is now our, our side bend, so our sideways reach, or everything we need about reaching, grabbing. So firmly on the floor, uh, on the chair again. Support if you need, and it's a sideways bend and come up. Other side, bend and come up. If more comfortable, just release but support the hands. Bend and come up. And in standing, it's the same. Wide base for balance. Hips fairly fixed, we can squeeze, slide hands down the seams or you can support the arms if you want to or if you'd like to start to bring in a little reach and extend that's okay. Always support, if we're going to move the trunk and the head this may challenge your balance so we can use the table also so we can slide the hands out. How are we doing? Have a little release, hang on, it's okay to stop and pause. Back extensions, here we go. In seated, so this one is where we're really looking to extend and mobilize the spine in a lifted position. So if you have restriction or limitation, just lift a little bit more than you normally would. Hands on the thighs here from your usual posture position. Extend up and come out again. It releases, it just moves in and out of position. And it's the same in standing, have a look. Balance, take up some support for this one. And we have here and return. And you might want to give yourself, this helps kind of guide that movement further, back of the hand, and it's a really nice one to take. 
if you've been washing up or bending over or gardening. So quite a lot of our daily activities in life bring us into this flexed position because we're doing stuff. And you will instinctively know that sometimes it's just nice to stand up a bit straighter. Good. Okay, ankles please. Uh, in, in stood. In standing. Uh, let's have our little bit of circuit boost just to get moving again. Um, but slow this down and bring it to a foot pedal. So can you see I've come from a march to now a foot pedal. So I'm leaving the balls of my feet behind and picking up the, picking up the heels, really squeezing the heels there. And this is the same in seated. So I'm just playing around with these, these ankle movements. So we can alternate one heel, one heel. If you are in a sit position for this one, have, have your feet back a little bit. If, you're, if they're all the way over there, it's actually gonna be feel a little bit harder. So bring them back. And now that allows a bigger movement, okay? Uh, now in seated, take your feet forward and now just take some toe raises, alternating, okay? Now in seated, lots of options here, come all the way back into the chair for a little bit extra support, pick up the leg a little bit and now bring that flex and point together. Look if you need to, again, three, one, three, five of these, don't forget to change legs. And in standing, we can then bring in the, the heel toe, really trying to get the toe where the heel was. And as you can feel, see here, I'm also spending longer on one leg. So this will challenge balance. So hold and change sides. Okay, can I just put in a couple of heel raises, extra heel raises while we're up or while you're in the best position for chair here. Let's just focus on uh, a lift and a squeeze and a hold and now lower down. So I'm preparing you for the strength version of this that comes in standing. So if you are in stand, take up support, moving into a strength activity, feet are parallel, so your, your heels are definitely under hips. Let's go for a power up and then a slow, 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 slow down. And if you can see from here, when I push up onto balls of feet, the weight's over my big toe and my second toe. Keep using the support for this. I'm doing this because I want you to see my toes. And then we lower, 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 lower slowly. Can you really try to get the weight over the big toe and the second toe? And you will feel this, is, you'll feel this in the back of the calves. Slower, lower, lower. Three, five, six, seven, eight of those, you'll start to feel it in the back of the thighs. In seated, it's the same. And give the calves an extra squeeze and take a pause. Okay, I'm gonna go. I think I've robbed two minutes or so from you. If, um, if you feel that you've worked your calves quite hard, put in a little calf stretch now while I've gone. So just squeeze the toes back. You can do that when I've gone. Thank you very much. We're back at 12 o'clock. Um, and I just want to plant the seed that we've been starting to think about wrist mobility and wrist strength. And if you have this calendar, have a little glance at April, uh, the wall press movement. This is what I'm trying to build us up to. Thank you very much. Great to see you. Oh, I can't see you. And I won't say it's great for you to see me, but there we go. Oh, stop. See you at 12. Thank you very much. Keep moving. Every movement counts. There's 10 minutes in the bag. Boom, right there. Thank you very much, folks. Bye.